Hey, this is a review of The Alabaster Girl by Zan Perion. Add this to your wish list ASAP. I got this free about a year ago when I heard that Zan Perion was offering this book for free on Amazon Kindle. This is a Manosphere book, and I would put this just below The Book of Pook. I'm going to do another review of this, so this will be part one. I want to read this book and look at most of his YouTube videos and to get a better understanding of uh, who this guy is. I do recommend this book for the MGTOW. This will give you a, a softer and more appreciative sense for the feminine essence or the feminine spirit. Bluntly, this book will reveal beauty and darkness, an earthquake type of vibration. Most of his chapters are named by The Way. The writing style is very poetic. It is set up as an interview with a female where he reveals his seduction techniques as well as sharing his knowledge about what he's experienced and what he knows. Somewhat like Interview with the Vampire, Sam was obviously very influenced by Casanova, Shakespeare, Thoreau, and Ovid. All these emit through his writings. I knew it even before he even mentioned it. And I've explored many of the people that were in the game, uh, Neil Strauss' book, about the pickup industry starting up around the early 2000s. And this guy didn't really find very interesting, I'll admit. At first, he took his own path after the whole Project Hollywood dissolved. A little bit about him is he's from Canada, uh, very insecure when he was younger, didn't really get out of Canada in the forest. That's what he describes it as, the wilderness, until he was about 19 years old. He was very insecure until he was maybe 21, until he found his way in life. He always adored girls. Did a bunch of beta techniques to try to get dates, and he's got a Johnny Depp lookalike, jewelry, tats, hat in the vest, like a Captain Jack lookalike. And especially after the game book, many of these pickup artists in their echo chamber, the success got to them that it reinforced, hey, we're the ones that figured this out, or we are the best, because all the a lot of the attention was focused on this group who finally broke into the mainstream a bit, and the success reinforced itself. So when all these beta mills are giving you attention, it could give you that reinforcement of what you're doing is right or that you are a good leader. But there's always more. His seduction style was more like a Casanova, not the best looking, heavily curiously listening to any female where all females are beautiful. All females deserve like love. He's not a cold approacher. However, he does reveal the cold approach anxiety that many males feel. I heavily agree with him, especially watching some of his YouTube videos. The rite of passage has been missing for man. And for the current culture, we as males have failed the new generation. And that's important. It takes research and wisdom to understand that. He gets credit for that. Also a good angle is this knowledge, especially in the beginning. He reveals so much as a philosopher. However, in the end of the book, he conveys that the mystique of the feminine or that he doesn't know everything. We're continually learning and he was continually evolving. Also, if you're a female listener, this is a good book for women, too, as well. This poetic, romantic style will not appeal to many guys, but it's got a softer style. And this took quite a bit of time to edit and produce. And in terms of his pick apart style and seduction techniques, is he waits for the invitation versus a cold approach. I do not agree with that. However, he's seasoned and he kind of knows what he wants. He wants to get to know everybody. Every woman is worthy of attention and has a certain beauty to them. And there should be like this radical pull down that you see uh, with some bitter men. If he gets a hint or smile, he's game. He needs a reason to approach. Sam promotes a low consumerism as well as he travels around the world, meeting women, just living his life. Not really chasing women, just trying to figure out the world. He does put forward that he learned from women. Whereas I do think you have to learn from nature as well as from wise men. He didn't read many books, and I do not agree with that. I think he's missing. He did read a ton of books, but he didn't read the books on relationships. Zan learns from just women, and there's a lot of wisdom that you can learn from other guys, not just Project Hollywood. And he's very aware of how young males are affected with, with feminism taking power. He's in line with the continual support of women, a feminine spirit. And it does take a more advanced man to understand that. And you can check out his website, Ars Marata. Also, I'll put links down below to his YouTube channel. And I want to watch all these. And it seems very weird that he had a table of four guys explaining everything in this book. I think I'll watch them all and then I'll make a part two at some point. And from learning from women, he gives his expertise, such as the main problem that females are sad or men aren't showing up. Where I don't really agree with that, I do think 
that the manosphere in general, a man is everything is turning underground where it's developing a, a new shell. And it's part of nature for balance to take shape. Make sure you pick up this book and you'll learn the virtue of curiosity and listening. And you're going to find beauty in darkness. This is one hell of a book. It took him about 10 years to write. I do think he's being very sincere. He has that background, especially with him being in the game where Mystery said he wants to be like Zan. And this guy's got, he's got it going on. So I would check out this book for sure. I would read this whenever you get a chance. All right. I'll come back to you with part two at some point.